November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. This video is about that blue lever or knob in your plane. It's the one that controls the RPM of your engine and propeller. But I thought the throttle controlled my RPM. Well, it did, back when you used to use fixed pitch props. Constant speed propellers are variable pitch, and they change their pitch to maintain a constant speed. So remember, back when you flew fixed pitch props, what did you do when you needed more thrust? You moved the throttle, didn't you? Right? Because you had to spin the propeller faster. To get more thrust, all we can do is turn the propeller faster if the blade pitch is fixed. Not so with a constant speed prop. Now, it's the engine that maintains a constant speed, not the airplane, luckily. A uh, single speed airplane wouldn't be of much use now, would it? So, designers thought it was a good idea to add complexity by giving you another color in the cockpit. This blue knob sets the desired RPM of the engine. Now, how does it do that? Well, magic, of course. Which is easily confused, of course, with brilliant engineering. And so I'm going to explain that magic now. The blades on a constant speed prop are mounted to bearings so that they can simply rotate on their axis. Like this. <laughs> constant speed props typically use hydraulic pressure and springs to move a piston inside the propeller hub. The spring is going to rotate the blades one way and the oil pressure is going to push them the other way. This piston is connected to pins or linkages that then rotate the blades around the propeller shaft. Yes, I keep doing this because that's what they do. This is all controlled by a propeller governor. The propeller governor is autocratic and gets to manage the speed of the engine without interference from a legislature. Governors are used in pretty much all internal combustion engines that regulate their speed. But here we use a governor to control the propeller pitch and thus the engine speed. When you set the prop for high RPM, the blades were going to go flat so that they have less drag as they rotate. You'll select a lower RPM for cruise so you don't uh, wear your engine out, maybe 2300 RPM or so. Now, when you pick that RPM, the governor is going to maintain it regardless of the throttle setting or other factors, mostly. Now, how in the world does it do that? Well, if the engine starts to speed up due to a descent or a throttle increase, then the blades are going to go to a higher pitch setting, and that creates more drag on the blades, and of course that slows them back down, and vice versa. So, when you move the throttle in your plane, you're going to let in more air, burn more fuel, but your RPM is going to stay the same, because the blades now are going to take a larger or smaller bite out of the air. Here's an example. You're cruising along at 2300 RPM and maybe 70% throttle. You bump up the throttle to 90% and your blades are going to twist to a higher pitch, but to maintain that 2300. You're going to go faster with the same RPM because the blades are now taking a bigger bite out of the air with each turn. When you pull the throttle back again, the blades are going to twist to a lower pitch and take a smaller bite out of the air to maintain the RPM that you set. Constant speed props are more efficient over a larger envelope than fixed pitch props, which might be tuned for either climb or cruise. You can have both with a constant speed prop, for the additional cost, of course, plus shipping and handling. You might have a prop that can fully feather, which means turn 90 degrees to minimize its drag. And those are required for multi-engine planes, because if an engine quits, you need to minimize drag on that side, so you'll feather the prop to do that. Of course, it might automatically do it, too. But if you're into turboprops, you might also have a reversible propeller, which can go into what's called beta range and pitch backwards slightly so that you can reverse your thrust on landing and shorten your landing distance. That's pretty cool. Propellers have pitch stops in them too though, um, so it's not constant speed forever. Once a low or high pitch limit's reached, then the RPM's going to increase or decrease. Blade pitch might range between maybe 11 and 26 degrees, but those angles cover most flight conditions. So that's how it works, but how do you use it? Well, we want to make sure that the mechanism is working before we fly. So we're going to exercise that blue knob during our run-up. We'll pull it all the way back 
and then we'll push it all the way forward a couple times to make sure that the RPM changes accordingly. If you're going, you're going to use, not if, you are going to use high RPM for takeoff and full throttle so that you get max power. It does matter which way you do things. We do not want a situation where we have a high throttle setting and low RPM because that can cause detonation of our fuel and our engine isn't going to last very long. You can see a little bit about fuel here. I devised a little mnemonic to help you remember in which order to do things. First fast, slow, last. First fast, slow, last. So if you want to go faster, you're going to bump up the RPM first, then do the throttle. When you want to slow down, you'll pull the throttle back, then pull the RPM back. Anytime you move either lever, we want to do it slowly and smoothly. The engine and propeller do not like to be bossed around too quickly, neither do I, and so you need to ask nicely. We want to keep our RPM in the green arc. That's the normal operating range, and the engine is driving the propeller in there. If you drop below that range in flight, it's likely that the propeller is actually turning the engine, and that's harmful and obviously not what we want. Always check your POH for limitations there. The throttle still controls your power, but it doesn't do it through RPM. Once you add the prop knob, we introduce a new gauge called the manifold pressure gauge. This is a pressure sensor mounted to the intake manifold between the throttle and the cylinders. It's measuring the air pressure that the throttle has allowed to reach the cylinders. If you don't have a turbo or supercharger, then the maximum manifold your pressure is going to get is, of course, atmospheric pressure. And if you're this far in the series, then you should already know what standard pressure is. Long pause, what is it? It's 29.92 inches mercury. We use mercury to measure pressure because it's dense and liquid at room temp. Standard atmosphere of water is uh, 33 feet, and that's not a practical length for measuring. Now, atmosphere does fluctuate at sea level, so you might get 31 inches or maybe only 28. You're also going to get less as you climb due to the decrease in air density. Manifold pressure is your primary power gauge now. If you've got more, in there, more air in there, you can make, burn more fuel and thus make more power. You can also now directly see why having a turbo would be nice, right? If you don't have one, your maximum power drops off surprisingly fast as you climb. If you do have a turbo, then your maximum manifold pressure can be more than atmospheric, maybe up to 60 inches or twice as much air. And with twice as much air, you can burn more fuel and make much more power with the added cost and complexity and the weight, of course. But maybe you spend no expense and have a turbo. And so that's nice. Congrats. In summary, constant speed drops are controlled by the governor and that's oil pressure changes the blade pitch so that the engine maintains a constant RPM that you set with the blue knob. First fast, slow last. Bump up the RPM before the throttle if you want to increase power and bring the throttle back before you bring the RPM back. We want to avoid high manifold pressures with low RPMs. That's what first fast, slow last is all about. Manifold pressure is now your primary gauge for power, not the RPM. And try to stay within the green arc. But go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That'll certainly help me out as we're leaving a bunch of comments and engaging in lively discussions down below. Hey, what are those? And thanks for staying with me on 121 Point Mike.